very quick taste test of um, the last free New England style-ish uh, IPAs. Uh, the first one, this is a double dry hot New Zealand style New England IPA, that doesn't make any sense. 4.9 uh, with loads of citra and racal. It's a nice colour, it's got a decent head. Let's see what it tastes like. Oh yeah. Mm. That is very, very pleasantly racal. Oh God, yeah. Nice mouthfeel. Kinda really heavily hoppy on the out. This, if you've watched the, uh, the video I did where I did two brews on the same day and I reused or I remashed all the crap that was left over in the mash tun. I remashed it and then fermented it. So this is the double dry hop New Zealand, New England style IPA. And I dry hopped this one with Motueka and Galaxy. It has lost its head. Never mind. Let's see what it tastes like. Bearing in mind this was an experiment and it's 1.7%. This is my first proper low alcohol attempt. Bloody hell. Now, I've surprised myself with that, I have to admit. I am very, very pleased with that so far. Very obviously, very heavy on the hops. 300 grams of hops went in the dry hop. 300 of Motueka, 300 of Galaxy. Low alcohol beer essentially is hop flavored water, but that is very, very nice hop flavored water. Both of these need another week and two days something like that according to the the uh, calculations in order to mature more however this today this has come of age this was looking for New England uh, I have been drinking this but it's only today reached the end of its what should be a conditioning phase and this was dry hopped with Simcoe, Amarillo, Citra and Galaxy so a fairly, a fairly predictable uh, set of hops there. Um, I don't think I've pulled much off the bottom of the keg. Um, so it seems all right. Nice color. Let's have a, let's have a whiz. And that matches anything that I would buy in a pub. <laughs> Crumbs. I'm happy with those. This was, um, well, I knew this would be all right, obviously, because it's a standard, and the way that, this will sound weird, but most New England IPAs have a very basic grain bill and, um, and some oats, uh, flaked oats. So all of these are fairly basic uh, at the beginning, and then it's the, hops at the end of the boil none of these have got early hop additions it's all after the boil so all in whirl, whirlpool or standing in there as it were and then dry hopping after about two weeks uh, I like to let the fermentation stop and then dry hop uh, drop the temperature to cellar temperature dry hop it for three days and then cold crash which is what I've done with all of these and uh, yeah, so this one, again, yeah, this is looking for New England. Nice, lighter colour. It, it has lost its head. I think I'm going to have to revisit this whole idea of the uh, flaked oats with the husk. I don't think they provide you know, that same mouthfeel and head. And it's easy to sort of like bring a little bit more head up, but 
it just hasn't retained it. Uh, neither of these have either. But it tastes, oh. Mm. Oh, yes. <sighs> That's bang on. Um, and the citra to chloride. Citra to chloride. Sulfate to chloride ratio. I think I need a few more drinks. I'm, I'm getting my walking thirds huddled. Um, yeah, good. Right, so just a quick update on those three. I have another uh, New England IPA going in the firm Zilla at the moment. Oh dear. <laughs> I think uh, that was my last video, which I popped up. And I think I'm going to do Citra Amarillo and Racal. No, I'm not. Citra Mosaic and Racal. Or, I don't know, Idaho 7. I'm not sure. Uh, today's the day. I've just taken a high dramatic commuter meter reading. Uh, so we're going to um, dry hop that today with the, uh, the little thing, you know, the little jug that goes on, jug, jar that goes underneath. I'm going to purge that with CO2 so there'll be no oxygen goes into there at all. Uh, so I'll make that decision and then I'll uh, I'll come back and just show the actual dry hopping as it goes in. And uh, and that will then be the end of a very short video. I've just put my hand on the sensor just to turn the fridge on for a minute. Okay, so what we've got here is 75 Mosaic, 75 Racal, 75 Citra. I didn't want to massively overhop this one um, because it's in this um, complete controlled environment. There should be very, very little um, wastage of hop flavors. So we have a beautiful little jar full of azops and that is the butterfly valve handle. What I've done is I loosened this. Oh, hang on, I've got to really reach the way of my hands. I loosened that and then I injected CO2 in here. So this is CO2 purged. I then tightened that and uh, found this was leaking. <laughs> Fucker. Uh, therefore, took that off, put it back on again, repurged it. We are now ready to drop in the trub from there and the hops should go up. Oh God, and this is where, if it explodes and goes all over me, the next part of this video will be me burning the Firmzilla. Here we go, are you ready? <clears throat> well, that didn't go quite as I expected. I expected those hops to all zap off up. There must be an awful lot of kettle trub in there. Let's see what happens with those. I might have to give it a bit of a shake if they don't go up. Hmm. Yeah. Let's see. They should rise up. Please rise up. Fruit trub. Back in a bit. Right, and tried, I tried injecting, I'm knackered. Tried injecting some CO2 into the bottom and opening the valve at the top. That didn't work. <laughs> so take it off the stand and ever so gently start rocking it. But someone did say they're gonna be well compacted in there and they bloody are as well. Um, so then I tried closing the valve and taking this off. And do you know what? This is why I have a constant love-hate relationship with this bloody thing. Because there's no way that's moving now. I put it on hand tight yesterday. And there's no moving it now. I might take a rubber, a rubber mallet to it. Um, but then I'll still have the, still have the problem of whether or not I can get the top lid off. Ah. Oh. 
someone find me something to hit? It has to be said, <laughs> miraculously, I did manage to shift those hops. <sighs> Bleed now. They were well swollen, as it were. Um, we always used to joke in casualty when you'd have a young lad coming in with a part of his body which he accidentally uh, got stuck in a milk bottle when he tripped in the kitchen whilst naked, shall we say. Um, and uh, and they swell up real, right big. Well, so do these hops. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. Anyway, I've dislodged them. Thank God for sun loungers, eh? I've dislodged them. We have got we've got the part of the body out of the out of the milk bottle. You see, listen, whoever says a lifetime working for the NHS doesn't prepare you for all sorts of things is wrong. Right, let's get this back in there, give it a couple of days, then cold crash it. Shaken. Not stirred. I really don't know where I'm at with this firmzilla. This is I've had it probably about seven or eight months now. I can't remember and I don't I don't really want to slag it off because it was a present and <laughs> you know what it's like but I think I don't know it's the disassembly that always does my nothing however at the moment we have managed to dry hop it without the risk of introducing any uh, oxygen so that's good um, I'm gonna give it a couple of days cold crash it <sighs> I don't know I don't know, having now shaked it all up a bit, I might have to crash it for a lot longer than I thought. And that's leaving the hops in longer than I wanted. I don't know, but it's an experiment anyway to see whether, <laughs> what an experiment, whether cattle trob makes any significant difference. <sighs> it certainly made a difference to me, getting those dry hops in. Right, so there we have it. Um, I need a bigger stainless steel, pressurised stainless steel fermenter. <sighs> Suggestions on a postcard. Send it to Kegland.